Remember, those variables only live as long as this function lives and they die when this function returns to the outside world. So what happens is when you call the function, and actually this is a really important point, when you call the function, the function sets the memory aside and it copies the names, the stuff you give it into that memory and uses it, and then at the end of the function it throws it away. So if you pass in two variables, it copies the values of those variables into the function, it works on those copies, and then when the function's finished, it just throws those copies away. So it's not working on the original data. There's that one other type of variable I haven't shown you yet. Let me just uncomment this. We've seen ints and longs and floats and doubles and chars. Uh, here's example two. Oh, what do you think I'm going to do in example two? Assign a very big number to x and then... I assign that very big number to y, and then I print out x and y. Let's just do that, actually. What will I do? I forgot to put the void in there. That's not good. Okay, now what did it print out? Oh, it printed out that it had seven error messages. <laughs> Let's go and see what they are. Oh, yeah, because I forgot to comment the rest of the code out. There's a bit of code hiding underneath here. Okay, now it ran. Here's our output. It, print, it put an enormously large number in the integer x, an enormously large number in the integer y, and it printed them out, and that's all well and good. But here's the interesting thing. What if I do something like this? y equals x plus x. How's that going to go? Oh, yep, that worked. What about x plus x plus x plus x? Ah, there we go. Uh, I could y, y equals 4 times x. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I just find uh, multiplications hard to understand. <laughs> no, there's no reason I couldn't have done that. Um, absolutely. Did you notice the interesting thing that happened here? Y, which was a whole lot of x's added together, suddenly turned into a negative number. What happened was, well, you tell me, what happened? X overflowed. Uh, yeah, it's something like, it's a, if it's a four-byte number, it was um, 2 to the power of 31 would be the maximum value it can store because it goes up and down. So 2 to the 31 up, 2 to the 31 down, and to the negatives put together as 2 to the 32. Now, if you've got a signed number and it gets too big, it's undefined what's going to happen. C doesn't promise anything will happen. On this machine, it wrapped around into the negatives. On other machines, it might cause a meltdown or it might just return the largest number or it might return a random number. You just don't know. So you've got to be very careful with overflows because when they happen, sometimes you won't notice they're there. And the system is undefined once an overflow has happened for a signed number. I wanted to... Do, 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 do. Ah, here's what I want to do. I kept telling you that integers were four bytes long on my computer, but maybe you're sceptical and don't believe that. So I thought, how can we find out? Well, there's a C operator called size of, uh, where is it here, that if you give it a variable, it tells you how many bytes that variable is. So here we are. I'm storing that very large number into X again. And I'm going to print out what the size of x is. And what are we expecting that that would be? 4. Yeah, we're expecting that x is going to take 4 bytes. It's telling you not the number that's stored in x, but how many bytes it used um, to store x. Ah, size of x is 4. Woohoo! Did you see that? I flashed away really quickly. So the int on this machine, in that case at least, was definitely four. Now, I thought we could do something fun. Would you bring up example four? Um, yeah, you could say size of character. Size of is defined to return one for characters. Characters are size one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you did size of, well, let's just do it. What are we talking about? Less talking, more doing. Let's say we we're doing example three. Was that right? Yeah. Let's say char letter. I won't even give it a value because as soon as I've said char letter, it's, it's set memory aside for it. It just hasn't written anything into that memory yet. Size of letter equals size of letter. And that should return... Oops. What? 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 
Oh, let's find out where these errors are. I didn't use X. <sighs> <laughs> We have to be calm and zen-like when we're programming. This happens all the time. Size of letter is one. So yeah, characters are size one. Um, th there's one more type I haven't shown you. So you've seen chars and ints. And you could, on your own computer, find out what the size of a long is and a short and a float and a double and all those things we were conjecturing about yesterday you could find now. Yes? What size do 64-bit computers use for so 64-bit computers, my 64-bit computer is still using 32. But there's no reason it couldn't use 64. And one day they all will. Now my version of GCC, compiling on this OS, on this chip, when I ask for an int, it gives me four bytes. But there's no reason it couldn't give me eight. Or even more. Mind you, when I was a boy, we had two bytes and we thought ourselves lucky. You guys have four. Okay, um, so that's example three. But I want to show you example four to show you the last remaining type. Do, do, do. Here it is. It's exciting. All right. <clears throat> X is an int, Y is an int, and Z is an int. What's this? Star means address of. Now, do you remember, if we go back to our old 4003 or 4004, the microprocessor had 16 cells of memory, and each cell stored a four-byte number in it, and the cells were numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, that's convenient, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And if I stored a 6 here, and I pointed at this cell, there's two questions I can ask about this cell. The most obvious question, and the one we normally ask, is what number is stored in that? So I said, what's the value of this cell? You would say, 6. six. But what's another question I could ask you about that cell? What's the address of the cell? Where is it? 10. ten. So 6 is stored at address 10. When in my program I'm using the word x, it knows that x is a memory cell somewhere. And when I talk about x, it thinks I want to know what's stored in that memory cell. But I could also ask C to tell me the address of that memory cell, where that memory cell actually is in memory. Whoop. And to find the address of a cell, you put an ampersand in front of it. So star ampersand x will tell me the address inside the computer's memory that it's using to store x. And it's computing that value and it's storing it in address. What type is address? It's not an int. It's not a float. It's a one of these. What's this? Well, how I'd like you to read this is address is a pointer to an int. Address, the variable name here, could have been anything, I could have called it x, but this bit here can't be anything. Int star means a pointer to an int. So it's the address of an int in memory. It's the first cell of a block of four cells on this computer used to store an int. Does that make sense? An address contains that value. So address here is given the address of x. x is an int, so address now stores the address of x. That sentence had too many addresses in it, didn't it? Maybe I should just call it something else. No, I won't. So, address stores, we often use the word pointer instead of saying address. Address stores a pointer, and the pointer it's storing at the moment is a pointer pointing to x. It's the address of x. So I'm going to print out, what is the address of x? Now to print out an address, to, to print out a decimal number, we go percent %d. Yeah, you'd use that to print out an int. But to print out a pointer, you do percent %p. And that will show you the address, and to save space, it will print it out in hexadecimal notation. So address is the address, oh, actually, in fact, to be even simpler, why don't I just do it this way to start with? I'll comment that all out. Please. Print out the address of x is, and then print the address of x. Ampersand x means the address of x. Does that make sense to everyone? I'll just comment this line here out, and we'll see what it, the address of x is. No, this tells the computer, when it's printing the number out, how to format that number. So the number it's printing out is the address of x. If I said percent %d, 
it would print out the address of x as a decimal number. If I want to know the contents of x, I don't say ampersand x, I say x. Yep. So the format string here merely, dis merely controls what it looks like when it prints out. It doesn't, doesn't affect what it, the value is that it's formatting. It just tells you how to apply a format to it. It's like the bold in a word processor. Yep, this is saying printed in pointer notation. So let's run, rather than talking, oh, got a failure again. Oh, yes, they are unused. I know that. I know it. Bum, bum, bum. Here we go. So it's printed out. Size of letter is one. Oh. oh, I haven't told it to run the example. It's called example four. It's getting a bit of a pain having all this stuff at the top. Would everyone agree? It's getting in the way of my program. I want to get rid of it. I'm just going to get rid of it. Cutting it out. It needed to be there. I need it to be there when it's compiling, but I don't need to see it. It's just annoying me. How can I somehow put it there when it's compiling but not have to see it all the time? I could hash include it. Let's do that. So I'll just go hash include, uh, and what am I going to call the file that I'm going to stick it in? Cheese.h. I'm going to call it main.h, because the file that contains information for main.c is normally put in main.h. And the file that contains information for um, leapyear.c is put in leapyear.h and so on. So I, if I put quotes around it, it's telling it to look for a file in the current directory. If I put angle brackets around it, it tells it to look for a library file. There's no library file called main.h, and I don't even know how to create one. So I'm just going to put it in the current directory. I better actually create it. File, new file, header file, yes, called main.h, finish. And it just contains what I cut and destroyed before. So now main.h contains all that stuff. And by saying hash include main.h at the top of my program, it gets stuck in there without me having to see it because it is very, very annoying. And I wanted to run example four, I seem to remember. That's the one we're up to. And here we are. The address of x is this thing. OXBFFFF70C. Can you see that's in hexadecimal? There's two clues that it's in hexadecimal. What's one of the clues? All the Fs and the Ds, that's not normal decimal. But the OX at the beginning is the formal thing. If a number or a constant in C begins with OX, like this, a zero, actually, to be precise, followed by a lowercase x, it means the rest of the number is in hexadecimal notation. Yes? Yeah, you can put all the hash defines in the header file too. Sure, absolutely. Get all the stuff out of the way you don't want to see ever again. Okay. Now... The address of x is this, which is an awfully big number, because my computer's got an awfully large amount of memory. So it's not a number like 15 or 14 that it would be on the 4004. It's a number that's millions or billions big. So somewhere in memory, at an address cell called FFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
So I'm going to say, find out what the address of x is, and then I'm going to print out what's there. And what do you think it's going to be when it prints it out? x is 1. Yeah, so it's, hopefully it's going to be 1. Let's have a look. Oh, errors again. Error, error, error. Oh, yeah, because I didn't print them all out. Sorry. Go. It ran. So the value of the address of x is blah, 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 708. Oh, it, look, it put it in a different spot this time. How about that? Last time it stored x over here. This time it stored x somewhere else. There's this element of non-determinism on what's going on here, it looks like. So x is in 708. Y is in 704. Z's in 700. How's it placing them in memory? Not completely random. If this is address 0, and down here is address F, 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 then which one is... X is stored at 08, something, 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 08. That's X is stored there. Oh, that's X there, which stores a 1. And Y is stored above it at somewhere beginning 04. That contains a 2. And at 0, 0 is Z, which contains a 3. Does that make sense? That's where the computer stuck it. And because it put a 4 apart, that's another hint to us, I guess, that it's using 4-byte integers. Um, it's, it can't be using more than 4 bytes, can it? Because otherwise, the poor guy in the middle, Mr. Y, would be getting squashed because he's got people on the other side. Yes? What text editor am I using? On the Mac, uh, um, this is a, this is Xcode for compiling it. It's got an editor in it and it compiles it. Yeah, it's all integrated together. It just saves me having to jump between two windows as you have to do. I can just be in one window and hit an arrow button. But other than that, it's very similar to just having a. Shh. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've remembered Ampersand from, star, uh, from Scanf. When we do a Scanf, is there one in this file? Scanf? Now, let me do a Scanf. Um, int x Scanf percent %d Ampersand x. It's like gibberish, isn't it? Soon it will just appear like normal English, but at the moment it just looks like gibberish. This is reading in um, x from the keyboard and noticing that on the format it's being entered in is an integer decimal format. Um, now what's happening here is I'm telling it ampersand x rather than telling it x. Do you notice a scan f is sort of different to every other function we've seen so far? Because every, what, what's happening in scan f? Let's just summarize for ourselves what scan is doing. It's reading from the keyboard and it's storing it where? Yeah, and it's going to end up being in x. It's putting something in x. Normal functions, when they return a value, when they do something and give you a value back, they return the value through the return statement, don't they? And you'd say something like, I don't know, x equals scanf or something like that. But this scanf is not returning anything at all. Well, it actually does return a value. I could say int mystery. Mystery equals scanf. Scanf will return a value into mystery, but it's not the value that was entered at the keyboard. Some other mystery value that I might leave it as a challenge for you to work out what it is returning. Scanf instead, unlike every other function we've seen, has its effect not by returning a value, which would mean it was a function. It has its effect by altering a value that you pass in. Now remember I said when you pass something in, C makes a local copy of it. This is so the function can't fool around with it and alter it. If I give you, pass you x, y, and z into a function, and you're the function, you only get a copy of x, y, and z. You can change them as much as you want. You're not changing my x, y, and z. You're changing your local copy. It gets destroyed at the end. But here, scanf is able to alter the value of x in the real world. It's like... Um, one of those stories where someone in the dream can affect reality. Like if, if the function is inside the function's a, a dream, it's, it's supposed to be just a copy of the real world. And if something happens in the dream, it doesn't affect what's happening in the real world, right? You, read, you write a book about the real world, it's a copy of the real world. In the book, if someone does something bad, it doesn't mean it happens in the real world. But scanf is crazy. You tell it something, 
And inside the scan F, inside the dream, inside the book, it can change the thing in the real world. That's amazing. We call that a side effect. When a function can do that, when it has an effect beyond what it's returning, that's called a side effect. Side effects are potentially very dangerous, so we're always cautious of them. So what's happening physically, literally, is we don't tell scan F, we don't give it the value X, because if we gave it X, when I say X, yeah, I mean the value stored at X. If I gave it X, it would just get given a copy of X. And if it changed it, who cares? It would vanish at the end. But I'm not giving it X. I'm giving it the address of X. I'm saying, scanf, here's the address of where X is. Now, it doesn't get the real address of X. It gets a copy of the address of X. But who cares if it's a copy of the address of X or the real address of X? It's still the address of X. If I've got your business card with a phone number on it, and I make a copy of the business card and give it to you, you've still got the same phone number. It's a copy of the card, but the phone yeah, yeah. So, so I'm giving it the address of X. The function inside now knows where X is stored. So what's it going to do? It sneaks off to that location and writes stuff into it. Ah. Diabolically. Aha. Uh -huh. That's why we write the ampersand. We have to, if we just gave it X, nothing would happen. We have to give it the address of X. Uh -huh.